Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about should Christians comply with all government laws and mandates, right? Should we follow everything that the kings and the governments and people in authority put above us say we should do, right? Well, yes, we should to a degree, right? Yes, we should to a degree. The only exception would be if it compromises or contradicts the word of God. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Now, there is order and structure in society, right, that God has established. You know, criminals do not go unpunished. There is a sense of justice. You know, when someone commits a crime, we take them to court. They're punished for their crimes, right? And a lot of times these crimes are things that... The Bible says you shouldn't do either, right? So there's a lot of times where the government authority has been established and we should obey their rules, right? We should follow that because God has established that. You know, even Jesus said in Mark 12, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, you know, pay taxes and give to God what is God's. So he's showing that he sets up the authorities, right? He sets up the rules and regulations. Sometimes man corrupts that. Right? But God establishes those authorities. Now, we can see clearly in the Bible that there is times where we should not comply. Right? There is things that we should not follow with. Right? And it's always when it contradicts the word of God or it goes against God's words. You know, things like abortion. Well, we know that abortion is murder. Right? The Bible says do not commit murder. So by the government saying, hey, you know what? Like abortion's okay. And in some states, they actually will pay to cover up you having an abortion, especially if you're underage, right? You don't even have to tell your parents. You can go get an abortion and this clinic will cover it up for you and everything's okay. You know, we're going to take care of it. We're going to pay for it. It's all good. But no, it's not all good, right? As Christians, we know that abortion is murder. And so we do not comply with it. Even if the government's saying it's okay, we know it's not okay. Okay, and we don't go with that and just excuse it away. Well, you know, it's legal. It's okay. So it's okay if I do it, but it's not okay. Right. Another one would be a pastor right, who does weddings. Should you marry people of the same sex? Right. If it's legal in your state. Well, you know, if it's legal in my state, love is love. Like, who am I to stop that? But the Bible clearly says that it's an abomination to the Lord. Right. It's an abomination to the Lord. And he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for their sin and he destroyed them partly for that reason, right? That they were giving into lusts of the same sex. So we know we shouldn't be giving into those things. We shouldn't be complying with those things. Now, more recently, there was mandates. You know, I'm from California. And before I moved, they were telling us in church, we weren't allowed to gather. And then when we did gather, we had to gather outside, but we weren't allowed to worship. You know, we weren't allowed to worship. So now you're telling me that it's a law or a mandate that I can't worship my God. Right? I can't open my mouth and sing and glorify my God. Of course, I'm not going to comply with that. Right? When you start telling me that I have to go against God and not put him first and not worship him and not give him praise because you said that it's not right, I can't comply with that. Right now, some people will be like, oh, it's not a big deal. You know, you can just worship in your heart. No, no. Right. We are called to not forsake fellowship with one another. Right? We're told to worship and honor God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul. Right? You're not supposed to hold back your worship and let man dictate how you're supposed to worship God. Now, I want to look at a few instances here in the Bible where people did not go with what the ruling authorities were saying. And God protected them. And not only did he protect them, but he rewarded them in the long run. So the first one I want to look at is Exodus 1 verse 16 and 17. Now, this is when the king of Egypt was killing the Hebrew male children because he was worried that they were going to grow as a nation and get powerful and overtake him. So he decided to slaughter all the boys so they could not grow and become powerful. So it says, when you serve as midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the male children live. So the king's asking them to commit murder. Right? He's asking them to kill these firstborn males. And the midwives feared God and honored God, so they didn't comply. Now, let's see what happened as a result of them not complying. So Exodus 1, verse 20 through 21 says, So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. So God blessed the midwives with families, right? And family is everything. He blessed them with families. He blessed them with lineage, right? He blessed them with generations. And what also came out of this was Moses, right? Moses would have been slaughtered and eventually God used Moses to free the people of Egypt, 
right? So as a direct result of not complying with this, not only did it produce Moses, but he blessed the midwives for their obedience and the fear of the Lord. Now, another great example of this is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When the king tells them to fall down and worship the idol instead of worshiping God, and it didn't comply. Right? So Daniel 3 verse 15 says, Now if you are ready when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Now, not only are they told to directly go against God by worshiping an image, right? Worshiping an idol, but they're threatened with the possibility of death, right? It says, if you are not going to bow down and worship, you're going to be cast in this fiery furnace and you're going to be killed. Now, let's see their response. So Daniel 7, 17 through 18, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego reply, if this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Now we know from the rest of the story, right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are thrown into the fiery furnace, and King Nebuchadnezzar cranks up the heat so much it kills the guards that throw them into the furnace. But what happens? God protects them, right? And Nebuchadnezzar looks into the fire and he sees four people in there instead of three, right? And one is the son of man, one is Jesus who was protecting them, right? And because of this, he immediately causes them to be taken out of the fire, right? His heart changes. He now realizes that the God that they serve is the one true God, right? Now let's look at Daniel 3 verse 29 and 30, which says, therefore I make a decree, any people, nation, or language that speaks anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other God who is able to rescue in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So not only does King Nebuchadnezzar declare that the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the one true God, and that's the only God that people are supposed to worship, but he promotes them within the province of Babylon, right? He gives them greater position, greater wealth, all these things, right? So the lesson is this. Sometimes when we think that going against against what man wants and going with God is going to lead to turmoil and destruction, it will actually be turned around to glorify God. And in the end, we're going to be rewarded for our obedience, right? So not all the time should we just blindly follow what we're being told to do, right? A lot of times we make excuses and we think, oh, you know, it's just a little bit of compromise. It's just a little bit of compromise here, a little bit of compromise there. But what happens in society is these little compromises sneak in, right? And they're little at first, but then they grow and then they grow and then they grow. And you're so used to compromising and giving into the ways of the world and the ways of man that you stop following God. He stops being your main priority, your main desire, your main love, right? He stops being your God. He's just your God when it's convenient, right? But we need to follow God, put him first. His word first is the absolute truth, and the absolute governing authority in our lives is the word of God above anything else, right? And when we do that, God will protect us. He will reward us. He will be glorified and his name will be furthered throughout the world. Okay, so God bless you guys. I hope this video helped you. I love you. Keep praying for me. I'm praying for you and we'll see you guys next time.